Good morning. It is September the 26th, Thursday. Our scripture reading for today is the books of Nahum and Habakkuk. So let's pray together, please. Lord God, our King, You are the one who um, created us and You sustain us. You uh, nurture us. You give us life. And You love us. Thank You for that love. Thank You for Your provision for us today. Help us as we study Your Word. May we be pleasing in Your sight. And Father, we do ask for Your forgiveness once again in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so about a hundred years before Nahum prophesied against Nineveh or Assyria, Jonah had preached to the city of Nineveh. Many people, including the king, repented and God postponed his judgment. Now, about a hundred years later, Nahum speaks God's words of impending doom on the nation of people who had attacked, killed, and carried into captivity many of the Israelites of the northern kingdom. Nahum presents the truth that a righteous God will not tolerate the wickedness of a country. In chapter 1, verse 2, the Lord will take vengeance on His adversaries, and He reserves wrath for His enemies, and will not at all acquit the wicked. Chapter 2, Assyria had been God's instrument of judgment on the northern kingdom. He had allowed them a victory for a time, but a reversal would come. Assyria and Nineveh, the capital city, would fall. Behold, I am against you, says the Lord of hosts. I will burn your chariots, he says. Chapter 3, Woe to the bloody city. Nineveh is laid waste. Your injury has no healing. Your wound is severe. Uh, so we close out the book of Nahum and we start in Habakkuk. Habakkuk wrote at a time when his countrymen were shamefully mistreating each other. He asked God for a solution but didn't like the answer. Chapter 1, he cries out, O Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not hear? He's, he says, I see plundering and violence. They're always there before me and justice never goes forth. Then God responds to him, I am raising up the Chaldeans to possess dwelling places that are not theirs. In other words, Judah will be conquered by the Chaldeans. Habakkuk pleads with the Lord again, Surely you wouldn't use an evil nation to judge us. But God says in, verse, in chapter 2, It will surely come. Just as God would use Babylon to mete out His judgment on Jerusalem, God would judge Babylon and bury it or bring it to an end. Uh, the Lord says, uh, The Lord is in His holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before Him. In other words, He's still in control. Chapter 3 of Habakkuk, Habakkuk is Habakkuk's prayer. O Lord, I have heard your speech and was and am afraid. In your wrath, remember mercy. So he realizes, uh, the, the prophet does, that God still, God's going to do what God will do, what He has willed to do. His purpose will go forward. And Habakkuk says, okay, God, I asked for an answer to prayer, and uh, you gave it. I don't like it, but I know that you are still on the throne. In uh, chapter 3, verse 17, uh, the Lord speaks about returning, uh, and Habakkuk talks about being faithful to the Lord no matter what. He says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the, ye the fields yield no food, Though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. No matter what comes, he says, I'm going to stay faithful to the Lord. The thought for today is religious activity is no substitute for godly living. And Christ is revealed as the one whom even the sea obeys. Jesus rebuked the winds and the sea in Matthew chapter 8. God bless you. Have a great day.